This is part four titled Sanctified in the sermon series on our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. Be enriched as you listen. We're going to take a moment and make our declaration. Here again, when we are in our in-person services, we all stand up to our feet. We hold our Bibles high up in the air and we make our declaration. So, uh, you know, you could do that from where you are. Maybe you remain seated however you wish, that's fine. But we're going to speak our faith. We're going to say what the Bible says about us. And these words will come on the screen. I just want to invite you to speak it out loud, bold and strong. Speak it like you mean it. Speak it because you believe it. And because it's God's word, it is true. So let's make our declaration together. Let's say this out together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do everything God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am in absolute surrender. I walk in the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us in that declaration today. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to spend some time, first of all, in the Word of God, just uh, feed our spirits uh, with God's Word, nourish ourselves in the Word of God, and then we're going to have a time of worship. The worship team will lead us in a song, and right after that, we will partake of the Lord's table. We are journeying through the scriptures and examining and exploring the subject or the topic of our identity in Christ. And uh, this is something we find throughout the uh, epistles, uh, a revelation, something that has been unveiled uh, through the apostles and the prophets written for us in the epistles and something we are uncovering. And the Apostle Paul is one of the uh, key apostles through whom this wonderful revelation of who the believer is in Christ, what God has done for us in Christ. And so what we have been emphasizing is that really we must discover our identity in Christ. We must understand our inheritance, what God has given to us in Christ, and we must learn to live out of that. So the Christian life is a life where we live out of our identity and our inheritance in Christ. That's the Christian life. You're living out of what God has done for you in Christ Jesus. So we've been spending, uh, we've uh, spent a few weeks on this. We talked about the fact that God has brought us into Christ, spiritually made us one with him. And that is the basis of our identity. So we emphasize this. We said, who you are in Christ is who you really are. That is your true identity. We talked about the fact that we are new creation in Christ. The old is gone, the new has come, and all things are of God. So you're brand new in your spirit, filled with the life and the nature of God. And so we have to live out of that a new person that God has made us to be in Christ. Then we talked about the fact that God has made us right, justified and righteous in Christ. He's, he's uh, declared us free from all condemnation and shame and guilt. And he said, you are righteous. And you can stand, you and I can stand before God without any sense of guilt, shame, accusation, or condemnation. We are right in his sight. We have a right standing with God. That's our identity, and we live like that. We live out of that. Today, we're going to develop this further. 
And in fact, there's a lot that is in the scripture talking about you, talking about me, who we are in Christ. And we're going to un- unravel, uncover these one uh, a little by little. Today, we want to talk about the fact that we are sanctified in Christ, sanctified in Christ. And uh, to, just to help us understand this, I want to mention, first of all, uh, two English words, sanctify, be holy, or sanctification and holiness. Now, these words, uh, you know, uh, to our minds, they think like we think maybe they are different words. But really, in the Greek, they are the same root Greek word that is translated in some places sanctify, in some places it is translated holy, or in some places, uh, you know, depending on whether it's the adjective, the adjective, adjective is holy. So God says, I am holy, be holy. It's the same Greek word. Or the noun sanctification or holiness, it's the same Greek word. Some places it's translated sanctification, some places it's translated holiness. But what I want us to, or what I want to bear on our hearts at the very beginning is uh, to be sanctified simply means to be holy, and they are synonymous. They are the same words, they're not different things. So to be sanctified simply means to be made holy, to be set apart for God, to be consecrated, to be hallowed, to be separated from sin unto God. And so we're going to delve into this subject of sanctification or holiness, of being sanctified in Christ, being made holy in Christ. So let's begin our our study here on sanctification or being sanctified in Christ. Let's read first Corinthians, read two scriptures, first Corinthians chapter one, verse 30. It says, Paul says, but of him you are in Christ Jesus. So that's what we are, that's our main topic or theme, in Christ Jesus. So God has brought you into Christ. And then he says, who became for us, that is Christ, became to us or for us, wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Christ became for us sanctification or Christ became for us holiness. So Christ is our sanctification. Christ is our holiness. So God brought us into Christ. So in Christ, Christ becomes your holiness. Christ becomes your sanctification. That means you and I in Christ have been made holy the same way Christ is holy. We've been set apart unto God the same way Christ has been set apart unto God. So Christ is our holiness. In Christ, we have been sanctified. Or in Ephesians 1 and verse 4, it says, just as he chose us in him, Again, that word, in him, those words, in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Same Greek word, hagios. We should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, let's think about this. God is righteous. That means he's blameless. There is no condemnation against him. He's righteous. And God is holy. That means there is no sin. He's completely separated from sin. So God is righteous. He's blameless. Nothing, no accusation against him. God is holy. Ah, there is no sin. Separated from sin. Now, in Christ, so the only way you and I can fellowship with a righteous God and a holy God is by having his righteousness and his holiness. There's no other way. So what did God do? In Christ, he brought us into Christ and he said, I'm making Christ to be your righteousness. I'm making Christ to be your holiness. So in Christ, you and I have been made holy unto God. And God says, I am holy. And he says, you be holy. It's that same word that's used for his holiness and the holiness he calls us to, or has granted us to. 
granted us to us. So Christ is our holiness. And in Christ, you and I have been made holy. Now, let's explain this a little bit more further. I want us to look at 1 Corinthians, two passages from 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul says, To the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. So look at that phrase again, in Christ Jesus. We are sanctified in Christ Jesus. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Now, in that same epistle, as Paul continues to write, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, it's a passage we read last Sunday, he writes to the Corinthians, he says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So notice what he's telling these people. He says, regardless of your background, and you know he mentions things that are really terrible. And he says, regardless of your background, right now in Jesus, you have been sanctified. Notice the past tense of that. He says in 1 Corinthians 1, 2, you were sanctified. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, you are sanctified. So as a believer, understand that you have been sanctified in Jesus. You have been made holy in Christ. So here's something very, very important I want us to pay attention to very closely. The Christian life is a life living out of this place of holiness and letting that holiness pervade every aspect of our life. It is not a journey of striving for holiness it is a life that you live out of this place of holiness. The Bible says, you and I were sanctified, past tense, sanctified in Christ. That means God has made you holy. He has set you apart from sin, separated you from sin. So, so you're holy, you're consecrated, you're dedicated, you're hallowed, you're devoted to God. You are holy. It's done. And then he says, I want you to live out of that, from that place of holiness. So the Christian life is living out of the state of being made holy, rather than it is not a journey of striving for holiness. Now, there is that part, which we will talk about a little later. But you must, we must understand this, that we have been made holy in Christ. And God says, live out of that, letting that holiness Touch every aspect of our soul and our body by the power of his word. So understand, this is your identity in Jesus. That in Christ, because of the cross of Jesus, and we will mention that a little later, God has already sanctified you. He's made you holy. Your past is gone. doesn't matter how terrible the past is. We just read this passage. That doesn't dictate your holiness today. It should not and cannot dictate. Your holiness today is determined by the simple fact that you are in Christ. And in Christ, you are holiness unto God. He has given you this holiness. And he's saying, live out of that place of holiness. By the power of his word, by the power of his spirit, let that holiness fill your soul and fill your body. That's the journey. But we are starting out from a place of holiness, not journeying into a place of holiness. That is very important for us to understand. You see, a lot of uh, emphasis has been uh, on, we tell people, you know, don't do this, do that. You know, you wear clothes like this, don't wear clothes like that. Or you wear jewelry, you don't wear jewelry. So that's religion. Religion is focused on the outward expression and things 
Holiness is acquired by those things that you do. But revelation, which is understanding the truth of who we are in Christ, says God has made you holy. You're not striving for holiness. You're living out of the place of holiness. So think about these things with me. You know, when we understand this, we should say, this is how we think because we have received this revelation. I am holy in Christ. I am holy in Christ. Therefore, I keep sin away from my spirit, soul, and body. Because I am holy, I don't want that to come in. So I keep sin away from my spirit, soul, and body. And like 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says, I cleanse myself all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. And so I'm not letting any filthiness touch me in any, any aspect of my being. Secondly, I am holy in Christ. Therefore, I crucify the sinful desires of my body because I want to keep this body holy. I am holy. Therefore, I crucify the sinful desires. I'm not crucifying my sinful desires in order to become holy. I am holy. God made me holy. God made you holy. And therefore, you crucify the desires of your body because you want to keep that aligned to what God has made you to be. Think about this. You are holy. Therefore, you purify your mind by the word of God so that your thoughts are pure and and, and, and kept pure. So you are holy. You want to keep your mind pure. Think about this. I am holy. And the new creation in me is righteousness and holiness. Therefore, I pursue a lifestyle of holiness. You are holy. The new creation is righteousness and holiness. Therefore, you live holy. It's the outworking of who you are, what God has made you to be in Christ, that is the expression of a lifestyle of holiness. That's what you pursue. You pursue peace with all men and holiness. This is so important for us to understand that holiness is really an outworking of what God has already done for us in Christ. We're not striving for it. We are living out of that place of holiness. So I'm going to emphasize that a few times here through this message. Now, as we look further in the New Testament, um, uh, I I want us to understand that the New Testament calls us saints. We just read 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 2. He says to those who are sanctified in Christ, called to be saints. And we find that in many of Paul's epistles, in his salutation, he would refer to believers as saints. He does that in Romans. He says once again, you know, you are saints. In Ephesians, he says to the saints who are at Ephesus. In Philippians, he says, greet every saint. Uh, In Colossians, again, he says to the saints, and faithful brethren. So he's calling believers as saints. And once again, it's the same root word in Greek. And it is the, the, uh, the word that is for, for saints is hagioi, which simply means consecrated ones or sanctified ones. Now, what God is looking, when God looks at you, he sees you as a saint, a sanctified one. I want to emphasize one as- important truth here about the holiness of God. The holiness of God, as we said, it it is being set apart for God, from sin unto God. But understand that holiness is an attribute of God. It is the nature of God. And that same attribute, same nature, aspect of his nature, has been granted to the believer. And that's why he's calling the believer a holy one. You are are a holy one. Just as God is the most holy, you are one of his holy ones. You are a saint. That means you're a saint because he has given you his attribute, his divine nature of holiness. He says, I'm making you holy. So you are a saint, which means in you is this aspect of God's divine nature which is holiness, which is that 
being set apart from sin. And so we let our, our life, as, as, I, as I'm emphasizing over and over again, our life is to let this holiness work out of us, touching every aspect of our being. And not only is the individual believer referred to as a holy one, uh, the entire body of believers are, are, are called a holy temple. And we see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. It says, in whom, that is in Christ, the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple of the Lord. And again, verse 22, you're built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So not only is the individual believer a sanctified one, a holy one, but the local church, the whole community of believers, and the body of Christ at large, all believers, are called a holy temple, a dwelling place of God. So the temple simply means where God dwells, and therefore you're going to keep it holy. And so understand that the whole community of believers, we're not talking about the physical building, but the whole community is a community of, that is a holy temple. It's a dwelling place of God by the Spirit. So wherever believers are, the holiness of God is present. God dwells among them. So as a people, we are holy to God. As a community of believers, we are holy unto God. Now, having understood this aspect, it is very interesting to see in Scripture that the Scripture says, on the one hand, it says you have been sanctified, which is what we have emphasized till now. But the Scriptures also say you are being sanctified. That means it's an ongoing thing happening in your life. So we want to just explain that a little bit and wrap up with a few thoughts here. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, is one of those places where we see this. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 9, 10, and 14, it says, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. That means the first covenant is removed. The old covenant is removed. The new covenant comes into place. Verse 10, by that will, that is by the new covenant, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So the new covenant and the sacrifice of Christ in the life of the believer sanctifies us unto God. So we have been sanctified through the, what Christ did for us on the cross and because we're part of the new covenant. So he says you have been sanctified. But very interesting, over in the 14th verse, he says, for by one offering... He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. So, very interesting. He has perfected us, but we are being sanctified. He said in verse 20, verse 10, sorry, you were sanctified. That means you were already made holy. But then in verse 14, he says, you are being made holy. So, there are two aspects to this. Like we said there is the fact that God has made us holy in Christ. But then that holiness begins to pervade our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, and then our body. That means our, our desires, of our choices begins to fill those areas, begins to slowly change every aspect of our being. That's where we are being sanctified. Things are being changed. And our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions begin to conform to the holiness, the holy one that you are. Your body begins to conform to the holy person God has made you to be. And so you are being sanctified in everyday life. And this outworking is what we must see happen for each one of us. We are living, we need to live out of our identity and our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Now, how does that happen? Uh, as we open our lives to the Word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, and live among a community of people who are the holy temple of God, then this holiness that we are begins to fill our soul and our body. The Word of God cleanses us. You know, Jesus said, you are sanctified by the, by the Word. Sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. That's John 17 and verse 17. So the word of God sanctifies us. Or, you know, Peter writes in 1 Peter 2, 22, he says, you have purified your soul by obeying the truth. So as you receive the truth, our mind is purified, it's sanctified. 
And similarly, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we let the holiness of God touch our flesh, our body, the desires, the choices we make, the way we conduct, conduct ourselves. And so the holiness of God begins to affect even our, the, our lifestyle. So we are sanctified and we are being sanctified as we let the word of God and the work of the Spirit and the community of God's people, the temple of God, influence us, affect us. Holiness is being perfected in us. So we are sanctified by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Now, let me just mention a few practical things as we live out this life, uh, living this sanctified life in Christ. And there's a lot the New Testament says about this. You know, so as we live sanctified in Christ, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it tells us, you know, God has called us to holiness. And so we must possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. Possess your body in holiness and honor. That means the way, what you do with your body, always think about it. Is this aligned to holiness? Because the Bible tells us we have to possess our vessel, our body, in holiness and in honor. So let the holiness of God touch every aspect of your body, what you do with your body. Very important to understand that we must walk in love in order to walk in holiness. This, we read in, about this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verses 12 and 13, uh, Paul writes to Thessalonians. He says, I want you to abound in love so that, verse 13, you, he may establish your heart blameless in holiness. So a holy life is not separated from a walk of love. You walk in love so that you can walk in holiness. Why? God is love. God is holy. You walk, walk in love. You're walking in God. You will automatically walk in holiness. And that's so important for us because for many of us, we see holiness and love as separate, you know, especially in certain parts of uh, the Christian world. They so emphasize holiness, there is no expression of love. It's all about do this, don't do that. And, and, and it's like a rigid uh, system, which, which, which they think is an expression of holiness. And they forget that you've got to walk in love in order to walk in holiness. You cannot walk in holiness if you don't walk in love, because God is love, God is holy. And love does not rejoice in sin. So if you walk in love, you will be separated from sin. You'll be holy. So we must understand that. And this is where we understand that grace and truth need to be blended together. Sometimes people so emphasize truth, there is no grace. But grace and truth are found in Jesus Christ. Or as it says in James 2, there is mercy, there is judgment, and mercy always triumphs over judgment. Mercy always overrides uh, what is just. I mean, mercy undergirds it and it overrides it. So our wanting to do right, holy, must be enveloped in mercy, in love. And so walk in love in order to walk in holiness. Our standards and values are set apart for God. They're holy. So in uh, the way you look at things, what you value in life, the standards you hold for yourself, always let it be determined by the fact that you are a holy person. So as you make choices, it comes out of that. You know, what choice am I making? I'm making this choice because I am a holy person. I value this because I am a holy person. In your workplace, as you make various choices, in your school, in your college, as you make various choices, as you choose what standard you, are, you have to maintain, what things you have to value, it always comes out of this place that I am a holy one unto God. And uh, remember that as we are sanctified, we actually reveal the virtues of God. The glory of God is seen uh, as we walk in holiness. There is the beauty of God that is displayed in the holiness of God and will not be seen anywhere else. So as you and I walk in holiness, we are displaying his virtues. We're displaying his beauty. And lastly, there will be persecution for living a life of holiness. You know, it's not easy in this world. Jesus said, you know, sanctify them. He prayed in John 17. He says, I want you to sanctify them. But the world will hate them because they are not of the world. So as you and I walk in holiness, we can expect 
the pressure of the world, the persecution of the world to come against us. But that should not cause us to compromise on our standards, our values, or our lifestyle of holiness. You hold on to it, you walk in it, because that's who you are. You have no other option. You are a holy one. You have been sanctified in Christ. And you're just letting that flow out of you. And you live holy because you are holy in Christ. I'm going to pause here. I want to encourage you to please download the sermon notes because there's a lot more in the sermon notes, much more than what you know, we can communicate in, in this message. Uh, look at the sermon notes, study it carefully. There are many other scriptures on this subject of being sanctified in Christ. Study it. Let it settle in your heart. Listen to this message over and over again. What we're going to do is going to let the worship team just lead us in a song. Uh, prepare your heart. And right after that, we will come and partake of the Lord's table together. And I'm alive, I'll walk in your counsel. And I'm alive, I'll walk in your ways. And I'm alive, I soak in your presence Cause you're my life, my delight I'm alive, I walk in your counsel I'm alive, I walk in your ways I'm alive, I soak in your presence you're my life, you're my delight. Bursting forth with life unending, breathing in your love, your love. Bursting forth with life unending, breathing in your love, your love. And I believe I'm rooted by the river I'm drinking deep with life-giving streams in your truth And I stand on shaking Cause I'm alive Cause I'm alive And I believe I'm alive, I walk in your counsel I'm alive, I walk in your ways I'm alive, I soak in your presence You're my life, my delight I'm alive, I'm alive You're my life. Change, you change me, Lord. You change me, Lord. And burn. 
So if you are in your home, uh, if you're by yourself, I hope you've got the elements ready. Uh, if you are the head of your house and you've got your family with you, I just want you to pray, bless and sanctify, consecrate these elements. Uh, these are simple elements, bread and grape juice or bread and water, whatever you have available. Uh, and just say, Lord, I'm doing this to proclaim my faith in what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. I believe Christ died for me on the cross, shed his blood so that I could be forgiven, so that I could be saved, so that I could be sanctified, set apart unto God. And today I proclaim my faith that I am sanctified unto God in Christ. I am his holy one. I am a, a person who has been set apart unto God and been given the attribute, the nature of God, which is holiness. The holiness of God has been imparted to me and I'm gonna live out of that. Take a few moments to pray, and then we'll partake together. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we sanctify these uh, earthly elements of uh, bread and grape juice, and we just pray, Father, that wherever people are, wherever they partake of these simple elements, the power of the cross that touches every aspect of our lives, will be made effective, Lord. I pray there will be a release of healing, a release of um, revelation into the hearts and lives of people that sets people free. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to touch every person at this moment. As we partake of these elements, touch every person. Let the power of the cross of Christ become effective in each one's life. The Lord Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together, please. The Lord Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenants that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's partake of the cup together, please. Father, we thank you for the word we heard today, that we are sanctified in Christ. And I pray for those who might be struggling in their lives, in their walk of holiness, struggling with things that are pulling them down. And Father, where worldliness and ungodliness may have taken root, maybe deep roots in the soul, in thought patterns, in emotions and desires, even sometimes to the point of becoming an addiction. Father, today, right now, because your word has gone forth, I ask that you will confirm that word. Let there be, Lord, an uprooting of things completely from our soul and our body. That every form of ungodliness and worldliness and uh, things that are unacceptable before you, unclean before you, let them, in the name of Jesus, be rooted out of our lives. And let every aspect of our soul and our body conform to the holiness of God. And Father, I pray that even when the enemy comes knocking with his temptations, 
with his allurements to sin, with his invitations to do unclean things. God, that this understanding that we have been sanctified in Christ, we have been made holy, and we're going to live that out. Let that just touch every aspect of our being. And we just say, no, that's not who I am. I am holy. I am an holy one. And therefore, my mind will be holy. My affections will be holy. My desires will be holy. My actions will be holy. Because I am an holy one. I am sanctified in Christ. Lord, let that work out in each of our lives. And we thank you, Father, for doing this. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us on the service today. And I trust that the word of God has built you and strengthened you and God by his spirit has encouraged your heart. Let's close, please, with a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publication, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcbiblecollege.org. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.